It has been suggested that 99.9% .9 of all the species that have ever existed on the planet have gone extinct. Given that there are about 1.8 million named species and an estimated order of magnitude more unnamed, this means that there have been 2 billion or so species that have existed on our planet since life began here 3.5 billion years ago. The number could be even higher when the full extent of microbial life on the planet is realized. Some scientists estimated that each year about 30,000 species go extinct. That is three species every hour. At the current rate of extinction, some biologists, including Harvard biologist E. O. Wilson, call it the sixth extinction. Well, now we're in the sixth mass extinction. We're at the beginning of it. We can pull it to a halt if we want. There's a lot of damage done, but we're not going to go the way of the extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs if we take action now. If we don't, then uh, we're, it's going to be a terrible thing to say to the children and grandchildren. Uh, well, we sorry, uh, we wiped it all out. We had a lot of fun. We laid a lot, a lot of money. We're sorry that we had it, uh, a lot of fun. But hey, listen, hang on. In five million years, it'll all come back in new form. That's going, uh, believe me, they're going to be rather peeved to hear that. The difference between this extinction and previous ones is that this time the source of the extinctions is almost entirely biotic, that is, caused by humans as a result of our changing landscape, over exploiting wildlife, polluting the environment, and challenging pristine environments with introduced species. It's not an asteroid, it's our own species, Homo sapiens, that's doing the job. The problem begs our attention, and over the past several decades, the discipline of conservation biology was birthed and matured. And some DNA technologies can be very helpful conservation tools, particularly when they help us better understand and monitor the species we are trying to preserve. Wildlife gene banks provide researchers with samples to conduct genetic studies on endangered and even extinct species. And genome sequencing provides new insights into what makes a species tick trying to do is to create this global library of DNA barcodes, snippets, little chunks of DNA that permit us to identify species. Building reference libraries of DNA sequences, and importantly, making them publicly available, allows scientists and conservationists to identify a species based on a tiny biological sample, helping to protect against international trade in endangered species and their products. We're so fascinated with the dinosaurs that disappeared. We spent a lot of time studying them and trying to recreate what dinosaurs were all about. Well, we've got wonderful creatures like the dinosaurs sharing the planet with us. We don't want to lose the rhinos or the elephants or the tigers. If we lost them, it'd be absolutely tragic. And we have entirely within our power, for very little money, the ability to prevent these animals from going extinct. The problem is that most people don't understand just how desperate the times have become, nor what a desperate measure really is. Genetic technologies are increasingly useful for understanding and protecting biodiversity, but they are no substitute for protecting habitats. Complex problems caused by human actions cannot be solved without corrections in the human behaviors that got us there. Any species is highly likely to influence other species around it. But then there's the matter of what does it mean when you pull a species out, you extinguish it, you just eliminate it within the ecosystem. Well, we don't know in most cases. It could be catastrophic there. What can we do? First, we have to resist thinking that technology will solve the problem of large-scale extinction. Technology will help us understand the problem better, but it is not the silver bullet. Second, we need to educate the general public better so that we all understand the immediacy and breadth of extinction. Finally, we need to get governments to focus on the problem. I'm convinced that the road we're on will lead us to disaster, not only for life on the planet, but also for humankind. And this isn't just about the extinction of monkeys and parrots, this is about human welfare. The longer biodiversity is underfunded and piggybacked with other disciplines, the more species appear in the rearview mirror.